Is the era of pure electric cars over before it even began? Why are the world's largest automakers suddenly pouring tens of billions of dollars into this so-called transitional technology? Today, we're not just comparing three of the world's most popular SUVs. We are going to decode a secret war of engineering philosophies. And this war will define how you and I drive for the next decade. On one side is the champion from China, the BYD Song Plus, representing a radical, electric-first ideology. On the other, the heavyweight from Germany, the Volkswagen Tigon, fighting for the perfect balance of power. And finally, the technical wildcard from Japan, the Subaru X Fi, bringing a completely different, hardcore solution to the table. This isn't just a car review, it's a glimpse into the future. Stay with us. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Volt China, your essential channel for the forefront of China's tech and mobility revolution. For years, every conversation about cars has revolved around one question when will the world go all electric? But while we were all watching Tesla, Another market quietly exploded, plug-in hybrids, or PHEVs. These vehicles promise the best of both worlds. The silent, clean ride of an electric vehicle for daily commutes, and the freedom of a gasoline engine for long trips, completely eliminating range anxiety. And now, in the year 2025, the PHEV market has become a global battlefield. To understand this war, we've selected three iconic contenders each with a completely unique soul. First, the BYD Song, plus DMI. This isn't just a car, it's the physical embodiment of China's new energy strategy. Its philosophy is simple. It is fundamentally an electric car that just happens to carry its own power station. Next, the Volkswagen Tegan, LPHEV. This is German Precision Engineering's answer to the hybrid question. It's not an EV with a backup gas tank. It's a true partnership. A powerful gasoline car and an efficient electric car, seamlessly integrated to pursue dynamic balance. Finally, the Subaru XV, known in North America as the Crosstrek. Now, this is where things get interesting. While it's often grouped with hybrids, its approach is completely different. It represents a philosophy of assist and enhance, using electricity not to replace, but to perfect the gasoline engine experience. Three cars, three continents, three radically different visions for the future of hybrid technology. Let's dive in. To truly understand these cars, we must look beyond the spec sheets and deep into their cores, to their engineering philosophies. First, the BYD song plus DMI. DM stands for dual mode and I stands for intelligent. But what it really means is electric first. Think of it this way. The Song Plus is, at its heart, an electric car. It has a powerful 160 kilowatt electric motor, equivalent to 218 horsepower, that drives the wheels almost all of the time. That 1.5 liter engine under the hood? Its primary job is not to drive the car, but to act as a highly efficient and quiet generator to charge the battery. Imagine, the engine is no longer the star but the personal chef for the electric motor, cooking up electricity only when needed. It's a paradigm shift. Only during sustained high-speed cruising does the engine connect directly to the wheels for maximum efficiency. The cornerstone of this system is BYD's revolutionary blade battery, a lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, battery famous for its exceptional safety and ultra-long lifespan, which we'll discuss more later. This is the Chinese vision. Make the electric experience the default, and gasoline the backup plan. Now let's head to Germany and look at the Volkswagen Tegan L P H E V. Volkswagen's strategy is what I call the art of balance. This is no longer an EV with a generator. This is a golden power couple. You have a potent 1.5T turbocharged engine, a hallmark of German engineering, working in concert with an equally strong electric motor. On the 2025 model, they combine to produce a massive 200 kilowatts, or 272 horsepower. Think of this system like a veteran rock band. Sometimes, the lead singer, the gas engine, takes center stage for a thrilling performance. Other times, the guitarist, the electric motor, performs a quiet solo in the city. And when you demand the most epic crescendo, they play in perfect harmony. 
the driver can choose between pure electric, hybrid, or even battery hold modes. The core idea is to give the driver ultimate control and to offer a familiar, powerful driving experience that's just been enhanced with electric capability. Finally, the Subaru XV. And here we must make a key distinction. It's sometimes grouped with PHEVs, but its e-boxer system is technically a mild hybrid, or MHEV. You cannot plug this car in. This is the engine assist philosophy. The soul of a Subaru is its signature symmetrical all-wheel drive system and its legendary boxer engine, which sits low and flat, giving the vehicle an extremely low center of gravity and excellent handling. The electric motor in the XV is not a co-star. It's more like a world-class personal trainer. Its job is to help the main athlete, the boxer engine, at the toughest moments. When you start from a standstill, it provides instant torque for a smoother takeoff. When you coast or brake, it allows the engine to shut off, saving fuel, and it recharges itself by recuperating braking energy. This electric motor is small, less than 10 kilowatts. Its purpose is not to provide long-distance electric driving, but to make an already great engine and all-wheel drive system even more efficient and responsive. So, you see? Three completely different brains. An electric car with a generator, a powerful gas-electric duo, and a legendary engine with an electric assistant. Now, let's see how these philosophies perform in the real world. All right, philosophy class is over. Let's get to the data and see how these machines perform on the road. First, power and acceleration. On paper, the Volkswagen Tigon is the undisputed king. With 272 horsepower and a massive 400 newton meters of torque, it's the muscle car of the group. This gives it a blistering 0 to 100 km per hour time of around 7.2 seconds. To drive, it feels every bit the German Autobahn Cruiser. Solid, powerful, and unflappable. But the BYD Song Plus is not to be underestimated. While its total power is slightly less, its secret weapon is the instant, silent torque from its large electric motor. In the city, the 0 to 60 km per hour acceleration feels incredibly quick and responsive. Its official 0 to 100 time is 7.7 .7 seconds, which is also very impressive. It's a silent urban sprinter that will surprise many at the traffic lights. The Subaru XV, true to its philosophy, is the most composed of the three. With a combined output of around 159 horsepower, its focus is not on explosive power, but on smooth, predictable delivery. Its 0 to 100 time is about 10.4 seconds. This car isn't built to win drag races. It's built to be a confident and dependable explorer on any road condition. Next, the all-important range race. The BYD Song plus DMI is simply in another dimension here. Its top-tier version comes with a 26.6 kilowatt-hour battery. That's larger than some early pure EVs. This gives it a pure electric range of up to 160 kilometers on the CLTC cycle. I'll say that again. 160 kilometers. For the vast majority of users, this means their entire week of commuting can be done on cheap electricity, maybe only using gasoline on the weekend. And when you factor in the fuel tank, its combined range reaches a staggering 1,450 kilometers. That's a level of freedom that could get you from Beijing to Shanghai without a single stop. The 2025 Volkswagen Tigon has also made huge strides here. It now has a 19.7 kilowatt hour battery, providing a very practical 120 kilometers of pure electric range under the WLTP cycle. This makes it a strong contender for daily electric commuting. Its combined range of over 900 kilometers is also very impressive, enough for any family road trip. The Subaru XV, being a mild hybrid, doesn't really compete in this event. Its electric capability is limited to short-distance assistance at very low speeds, mainly to help the engine. Its combined range is a very reasonable 800 kilometers, but it runs almost entirely on gasoline. Finally, let's talk refueling. Here, BYD plays another ace. The Song Plus is one of the few plug-in hybrids in the world that supports DC fast charging. This is a game-changer. You can charge the battery from 30% to 80% in just 28 minutes. Imagine stopping for a cup of coffee 
and adding nearly 100 kilometers of pure electric range. This completely transforms the convenience of a PHEV. The Tegan relies on AC slow charging. Using a 3.6 kilowatt home charger, a full charge takes about 3 hours and 40 minutes, perfect for overnight charging. Future versions will support fast charging, which will be a welcome upgrade. And the Subaru? Its convenience is that you never have to think about charging. Its small battery is replenished automatically by the engine and brakes. It's a closed loop system, which is very simple, but this is both its convenience and its greatest limitation. So, we have an urban sprinter with epic range, a powerful German all rounder, and a steady adventurer. But performance is only half the story. What about their cost of ownership and long term reliability? Let's talk about two things every consumer cares about fuel economy and long term costs. First, the million dollar question fuel consumption. Official PHEV figures can be misleading, so let's look at both lab and real world numbers. The official fuel consumption of the BYD Song Plus, when the battery is depleted, is just 4.95 liters per 100 kilometers. This is because its DMI system is fundamentally designed for extreme efficiency, with the engine always running in its most efficient RPM range to generate electricity. In the real world, owner feedback is just as excellent at around 5 to 6 liters per 100 kilometers. For an SUV of this size, that is miraculous. The Volkswagen Tigon's official fuel consumption is an almost unbelievable 0.4 liters per 100 kilometers. Of course, this is based on starting with a full battery and driving mostly on electric power. In the real world, if you charge it regularly, your consumption can be as low as 1.5 to 3 liters. But if you neglect to charge it, and drive it like a traditional hybrid, that number will climb. Its efficiency is directly tied to your charging habits. The Subaru XV's official fuel consumption is 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers. Real world figures are between 7 and 8 liters. This might sound high compared to the other two, but remember, this is a vehicle with a full time all wheel drive system. Compared to its non hybrid version, it offers significant fuel savings, but it can't compete with true PHEVs that have long-range electric capability. Next, a critical point, the battery. Let's talk cost, lifespan, and warranty. This is the biggest source of anxiety for potential buyers, and the differences here are massive. BYD offers the most reassuring promise. For the original owner, the battery in the Song Plus comes with a lifetime warranty. Let that sink in, a lifetime warranty. This is possible because its LFP blade battery is extremely durable, expected to handle over 3,000 charge cycles, or well over a million kilometers of use. Even if it did need replacing, the estimated cost is relatively low, around 20 to 30,000 RMB. Volkswagen offers a more standard, but still solid 8-year or 160,000 kilometer warranty. Its battery uses ternary lithium technology, which has higher energy density, allowing for more range in a smaller package. But the technology is more complex and expensive. The replacement cost for the Tiguan's battery is estimated between 40 and 50,000 RMB. Subaru's battery warranty matches the vehicle warranty, typically 3 years or 100,000 kilometers. Because its battery is much smaller and under less stress, its lifespan is expected to be very long, possibly well over 10 years. The replacement cost is also the lowest, at around 10 to 20,000 RMB. This is a decisive factor. BYD is using its vertically integrated battery technology as a weapon, not just for performance, but to eliminate the long-term ownership anxiety for its customers. So, after this deep dive, which engineering philosophy comes out on top? Is it China's electric first? Germany's art of balance? Or Japan's hardcore assist? The answer is, there is no single winner because these three manufacturers have created three brilliant but fundamentally different tools for three different types of consumers. So, the final question is, which path would you choose? Let us know in the comments which of these three philosophies resonates most with you and which car you would put in your garage. Your feedback is the fuel that drives this channel. Thanks for watching. And by the way, if you have a specific question you're dying to have me answer, Head over to my channel page, go to the community tab, find the Volt China data platform post, 
and leave your question in the comments. Each week, I'll personally select the best questions and provide detailed answers. I look forward to seeing you there. If you want to stay ahead of the curve in the incredible wave of innovation in China and around the world, be sure to subscribe to the Volt China channel and turn on notifications. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. Drive safe, and we'll see you in the next one.